So let's see some examples. Um, Kodak film, okay, camera film. If Koda thought that his biggest enemy is Sony film, then it's wrong because Kodak was eliminated by who? Not by Sony, but by smartphone. So smartphone has very strong camera functions. So smartphone eliminate, wipe out Kodak and Sony film as an old product, outdated. Okay, so pickpocket. So pickpocketer um, enemy. Who, who's that? Is that you know other pickpocketer or police? No, it's um, mobile payment. Okay, so mobile payments um, make pickpocketer no business because you know, you cannot steal any you know bills from the wallet because everybody uses cell phone to pay. Okay, for instant noodles. Do you think this brand of instant noodle gets you know, wiped out, you know, gets hit by other brands? No, the answer is food delivery. Okay, so Meituan, Erlma um, are the food delivery companies in China. But in Taiwan, um, we use Uber Eats and Food Panda. So talking about food delivery services, many people thought that food delivery are the replacement are the uh, alternative services for travel agencies during COVID-19 period. Like, you know, some of Taiwanese travel agencies, they start doing, you know, lunchbox, they start doing some drinks, they start developing their lifestyle brand. While um, some uh, big hotels, they have their, you know, canteen or, you know, uh, buffet uh, restaurants, they use um, food delivery to do the business during COVID-19 when people cannot go out, right? But have you ever thought about Uber Eats, Food Panda being our enemy? But how, how was that? How was that? Okay. So you just imagine that in the past or right now, like people love going out, you know, for good food. So we are looking for a very good restaurants and very good food somewhere, you know, in the countryside or in other counties. So we travel because we want to have that good meals. But if Uber Eats, Food Panda, food delivery technologies are maturely, completely developed. So you can, you can imagine in that kind of logistic skills that food could be delivered to anywhere. No matter how far is that, if you want to have a, um, for example, um, um, a pork, you know, a, a souvenirs, you know, a, a cakes, you know, from somewhere like hundreds of kilometers away, but you open that food delivery app and you, you have the order and make it, you know, come on your way. Those food can take high speed railway. Those food can take airplane, you know, as long as the costs are low enough to support that, that logistics. So when you have that, um, um, right, you know, to, to order the food from hundreds of kilometers away, you can, you don't need to go there, right? You can, you can stay home comfortably, or you can choose a, a guest house or, or even like, you know, a hotel, you know, in somewhere with very beautiful environments. You can stay there, order the food to, to be sent to your place. You know, I, I, I had a friend, um, who was uh, going to a southern Taiwan um, destination, a resort, and he was very lazy. He does not want to go out to dine food, you know, everywhere to have the local dishes. No, he uses Google Uber Eats, you know, to send those food into that resort, and he enjoyed like all those food by ten different orders from ten different restaurants at the same time in that resort. He enjoyed that kind of lifestyle, so he does not need to go out and dine. So in that condition, if we can you know, imagine, uh, all those people who originally um, going to looking for good restaurant, good food, all those travelers, their motivation was just disappeared because they no longer need to go out. They can just stay home. And, and you know, now we are talking about staycation, right? You can just stay there. You don't need to go out and you have everything on your hand. So that travel agency 
was supposed to serve those people who are looking for good restaurants, all right, in the past, or even like include those restaurants in their itinerary. But for now, they don't. They don't go out. They don't have that motivation. They don't use your services. Okay, so this is what food delivery um, service might affect travel agency businesses in one way. So this slide is a, uh, well, Tesla, okay? It's a self-driven car. Uh, I don't know if you dare to take self-driven car, um, but this is like semi-auto, uh, okay? So there is another one that is a manless, you know, a car without any driver, without any man in the car. It's running by itself. I don't know if you dare to, to get on this kind of car. Um, in my past um, speeches, most of the audiences say no. The reason is that um, the reason is not that they don't believe in technology. The reason is they they believe they don't believe in people. They don't believe in human, because on the road there are auto uh, cars and there are you know human cars on the street at the same time. While well, human might make mistake and uh, automobile. Um, uh, auto cars cannot detect if that mistakes are something common or something uncommon so the car accidents might happen on the street okay so I, I think that really makes sense you know um, um, my organization used to have a series of courses and it's called transportation innovation you know when it's uh, talking about tourism transportation is very important right so there is uh, this company. Um, it's uh, it's ma manufacturing uh, auto cars. So the person, the representative, told me that uh, the security uh, way to protect the auto car from like, the accident is that when it detects the obstacles within you know 100 meters or 100 centimeters, it's going to stop automatically. So you can imagine in a very big city. In a very like rush hour, very busy, you know, streets. There are like buses, you know, taxis, uh, scooters, motorcycles, and all the cars, and even like pedestrians on the street at the same time. Those auto car cannot even move because it cannot detect if that is the traffic or that is the obstacles. It's not smart enough. So, if we are talking about you know auto cars replacing driver guide, replacing taxis, replacing travel agencies, you know, car rental services that might be like, you know, after a long time because auto car is not only challenging um, its technology um, uh, maturity, the auto car is also challenging the behavior of humankind. Okay, if it's, you know, not able to um, get used to that kind of traffic in a rush hour, auto cars can never replace us. But there is in Taiwan, this service is now available, it's, it's getting stronger and stronger. Uh, we call it a uh, share scooter. So share economy, we all know, right? So share scooter uh, is basically provided by these uh, three companies, Wemo Scooter, um, GoGoRo, uh, it's called GoShare, and iRent. So scooter is very famous and common in Taiwan. Uh, people are taking you know, scooters as their um, daily transportation uh, tool. So this electric electricity scooters are available in those uh, legal parking spaces in uh, main cities in Taiwan where people can use app, you know, cell phone app to ignite that scooters and ride the scooters to somewhere you want to, um, charge the very low costs, and then you can return the scooters by clicking some buttons on the app and it's complete, you know. You can complete your short-term ride by renting a scooter on the street in Taipei, in somewhere in Taiwan. And uh, because there, are, you know, Taiwan people are like too used to this kind of services. So you can imagine, once these services are spreading to those, you know, tourism destinations, 
islands, you know, somewhere in the mountains, when there are like scooters everywhere, you know, in the ground, I don't believe that people would choose some other even more expensive transportation rather than scooters. Okay, so these shared scooters will be a uh, incoming, upcoming, you know, uh, threats for those travel agencies providing the rental cars or taxis or driver guide or you know drivers you know? so it becomes a very big threat and that we can foresee this to be happening in coming time so this is a video is showing that how this uh, shared scooter uh, is running All right, so there are some examples showing you that you know new technologies and new uh, app implications are going to affect the travel industry in different way. Uh, let's take a break. After this break, I'm going to elaborate more to you.